I get started. Today, I would like to twist our general beliefs on global warming effects. People often think that global warming only has one effect. However, this is only one portion of its broad effects. In fact, there are some countries that have been benefited from this warming effect. So, the main point of my talk is global warming effects will actually bring economic benefits to Russia in terms of future land use change, resources, and shipping rates. And here are some general background information. The formal definition of global warming from several dictionaries is that the rise in the average world temperature of the Earth due to the greenhouse effect that the trusting heat that would otherwise escape the atmosphere. And according to one researcher, the average world temperature increase from 1970s to 2016 for 46 years is 0 0.306 degrees Fahrenheit. However, despite this warming effect, Russia has been affected by one dominant climate, which is called the Bernie climate, where the temperature in summer is over 50 Fahrenheit degrees, and the lowest temperature in winter is 27 Fahrenheit degrees below zero. And as you see in this map, most part of land in Russia belongs to this Sabardi climate region. So because of this cold climate, there's associated environment called Tundra environment, where the region is covered with frozen grasslands, with frozen grasslands, which is called permafrost. And as you see in another map here, it is mainly located in northern Siberia. So let's go to the main point. The first advantage that global warming would bring to Russia is future land use change. So far, Russia has utilized 12% of its entire land for agricultural use. And the average ground temperature of most land in Russia is under 50 Fahrenheit degrees. However, most importantly, plants can't grow under 50 Fahrenheit degrees, which means most of the land in Russia is unfarmable. However, with global warming effects, there will be a rise in temperature which will melt permanent dust, and that which will eventually add, which will eventually yield additional arable or permeable lands to Russia, which can be added up to 425,000 square miles, which can increase the proportion of agricultural land up to 67%. And therefore, the Russian government then would be able to grow cereal crops like corn. So to calculate the estimated financial grain, again, um, so far Russia, no, um, 122 million additional hectares would be added, and one hectare of land can can yield up to 3,000 kilograms. Therefore, 56 billion USD would be added up, would be added to Russian economy annually. Next, the second advantage that global warming would bring to Russia is more and more resources. Russia has been heavily dependent on raw material exports, and as you see in this pie chart, 71.1% of the entire structure of Russia's export in 2014 was actually mineral, fuel, and oil. And furthermore, according to Russian official, under the early ocean, there are 90 billion barrels of oil and 1,670 1, trillion cubic feet of natural gas then. So with the warming effects, Russia will expand its base of oil and gas resources, increase resources, and other forms of strategic materials. But how, all, how can all of these be possible? Because the early ocean is under Russia's exclusive economic zone, which stretches from its coast to 200 miles. And here is another map that is showing how can Russia claim all these rights. So to summarize these into three simple steps, with the global warming effect, there will be a rise in the temperature, which will melt the floating iceberg in the ocean, and eventually will help Russia and government to extract more and more resources. Again, to calculate estimated financial gain, currently, the price of one barrel of oil costs $52 USD, and there are 90 billion barrels of oil present in the Arctic Ocean, therefore, it will be added up 
Uh, therefore, 4.68 trillion USD will be added up to Russian economy, which is nearly three times larger than the Russian gross domestic product in 2015. Finally, the third advantage that global warming would bring to Russia is new shipping routes. Russia transmits oil and natural gas mostly through ships or transporting vessels. And so far, Russian ships have utilized the Suez Canal route or the Kinshav route. So where are they? This is the route that passes through the Suez Canal. However, as you see in this map, Russian vessels have to go through the Suez Canal and then go down to go all the way up there. This is route that passes through Cape of Good Hope, which, is, which seems even worse. <laughs> However, as the temperature rises, another sea route also rises as the potential transportation route, which is so-called the Northern Sea Route. So, with the global warming effects, also the development of the Northern Sea Route, Russia can save time and energy that would otherwise be spent on transporting oil and gas resources. And there is a study case that actually proves this. According to one study case, if Russian vessels trying to transport its oil from St. Petersburg, where it's located far east, far west from Russia, to Vladivostok, which is located far east part of Russia, it takes 14.4 thousand miles through the Suez Canal. And even worse, 18.32 thousand miles through the Cape of Good Hope. However, it only takes 8.8 thousand miles through the NSR. So, here is my conclusion. Because of the global warming effect, there would be wide, there, there would be rise in world temperature on one side. Um, there would be melt in permafrost, which can yield more farmable or arable land in Russia, which will be added up to 56 billion USD annually to Russian economy. And on the other side, there would be melt in, there would be melt in floating ice in the Arctic Ocean, that can help Russian government to extract more, more oil and gas resources, which is corresponding to the threefold of its GDP. And lastly, it can help the Russian government to develop the Northern Sea Route, which can reduce traveling distance to have and also save time, money, and energy. But why is my research so important? Because it contradicts our general belief that global warming only has negative effects. Therefore, we have to recognize these positive aspects based on my research to prepare not only for our climate, but also for our economy. Because recently, America and Europe signed agreements on limiting our carbon production. However, if Russia is going the opposite direction, then what is so good about all these efforts that we have made and we will make? Thank you. Did, did you do any, um, find any research on how much land they might lose due to rising of sea level that might compensate for their gains of land through melting? Do you have any data on that? It might be interesting I, to find it if you don't, that's oh, what I'm saying. I haven't looked at it, but since Russia is located high latitude region, so there might be not much loss of land because of, due to the warming effects, but um, there would definitely be several countries that would suffer from this warming effect because, because of the rise in sea level. Yes, sir? Okay. Um, so how long then would you suggest for Russia to be able to take advantage economically? Oh, how long? Uh -huh. um, based on my research, I would suggest, um, I, I think um, probably the more, the more warming effects. Uh, I mean, the more warming effects going on, um, the more benefit that would have because they are located in high latitude. So, but to take full advantage, you threw a lot of numbers out there, particularly right. regarding oil. Um, are we talking twenty-five years, fifty years? Of oh, oh yes, actually, um, to extract further oil resources, mm -hmm. they are actually lack of technology right now, and also there's a. Uh, 
there is present danger like floating icebergs in, in the uh, in the early ocean. Mm -hmm. However, there is one research that stated um, by summer in 2040, the, the most part, the most of the floating ice in the early ocean will be actually melt. So yes. And I, I just have one more question. Um, oh, yes, please. Um, my girlfriend's from Siberia, and I'm actually much more interested in Russia than she is. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, has Putin or anyone else from Russia vocally tried to discredit the notion of global warming? I mean, just because they aren't signing treaties like Europe and the United States is, does that necessarily mean that they are poo-pooing the idea of uh, global warming or climate change? Oh, um, I, I would say... Um, because there was actually an official report from the Russian government mm -hmm. that they will expand their um, resource market through developing, um, through um, extracting more resources mm -hmm. under the early ocean. So, yes. Okay. Thank you. And, yes. um, so, do you think uh, that because Russia is obviously going to want to take advantage of these opportunities, do you think that the Trump administration is aware of this and that this uh, and that Russia's pro global warming stance has affected our relationship with Russia. I think um, Trump's administration is definitely considering the economic benefits that Russia can have from global warming effects, and that can probably give um, they can um, probably give positive impact with the with the relationship between our country and Russia. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think this is a really interesting perspective on like a very, uh, especially recently controversial issue. Um, I guess like out of a lot of these countries in the Arctic Circle, uh, why did you pick Russia to talk about in this instance? Oh yes, there are a lot of countries located at high latitude, like Canada, Sweden, um, Norway, Finland. But I chose Russia because Russia is the country that has the greatest portion that overlaps um, its exclusive economic zone and then the early ocean, so, so I thought um, Russia would be the country that would have the most benefit. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the, the climate raised to enough temperature, final temperature to melt the ice, how would that affect the rest of the world? If it did have a negative effect on the rest of the world, wouldn't that impact the trade, therefore the economy? So, um, impact. So, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, uh, the temperature rises enough to melt the ice. When that impact the rest of the world, which would have negative effects on the rest of the world and not, not as high climates, right? So that would affect their economy, which would affect trade, which would affect Russia's oh, economy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, Russian, um, Russia's uh, the, the main countries that Russia have um, been doing trade is are like um, Norway, France. Um, and also Germany, those countries in Europe. And the countries that actually have been suffering from global warming effects are those like right under the equator, like Singapore or Tuvalu. So that will not really affect the Russian economy. Has the Russian government admitted that climate change is overall not healthy for our planet, but that their economic gains are more valuable, or have they denied the existence of climate change? Oh, um, they actually, uh, um, according to Putin's official statement, he recognized that there is a global warming effect, ongoing, ongoing global warming effect, but um, he actually mentioned both, despite that warming effect and despite some countries suffering from this warming effect, Russia can actually have benefit out of it, okay. so yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming to session one. Have a great day.